Great. Uh, how are you leaders? And uh, it's always a pleasure uh, to connect with you. And I trust you are well. I trust you as we have started well since the last time we had uh, such a discussion. Uh, been reflecting on the very, very important discussion that we had last week on Monday. So maybe could I say just hello to uh, uh, to the team and then we'll be able to start our conversation tonight. I uh, will start by maybe inviting Betty. Betty, could you say just hello to the team and maybe uh, say something? I know we have come quite far. Uh, we have a lot to share. Uh, Betty, welcome. Uh, good evening, leaders. Um, my name is Betty, for those who don't know me. Uh, it's been quite a journey. I've enjoyed every bit, and I'm grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Betty. It's always a pleasure. You know, when I was writing that message today that this is the second last session, I was like, wow, just the other day, and here we are. Yeah, so each cohort, when we are concluding, we always feel something. Is that sadness? <laughs> but uh, we have to continue. But again, the beauty of this is that it is a network, so we we'll still be able to uh, connect even beyond this. Beatrice, how are you? And uh, welcome and say hello as well. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is my name is Beatrice Koech, and uh, I'm happy for how far we've come. It's been it's been nice. We've connected, and uh, yeah, I'm now looking forward to the graduation. <laughs> I would want to meet all of all of us and have fun together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. I remember uh, during one of our meeting. Uh, one of the leaders was saying, I want to see these leaders behind this sound, these voices. So she was really very, very eager, and we had a very, very fantastic time. So we look forward to uh, Beatrice uh, to the 25th of November. That will be a great day, and we are praying uh, that God will uh, give us that opportunity. Uh, Margaret, how are you? And uh, welcome and say hello as well. Uh, good evening, leaders. Good evening. Margaret Jorogi. Yes, I've, I've come far. Yes, I, I, I agree with the, with the team. We've come from far. And it's, uh, actually, it is, uh, I would say, I'm happy now that we are about to go. Oh, oh, oh. mm. I'm happy that we are about to, to to qualify. I'm also looking forward to that graduation. Yeah, thank you so much, Margaret. Uh, we look yeah. forward uh, to the graduation and also to the networking forum uh, as we prepare to usher you to the bigger network. Uh, welcome all. Uh, Teresia. I know you have a lot to say. <laughs> uh, thank you for taking us through the discussions uh, in the previous sessions. Uh, may, let me also invite you just to say hello to the leaders as well. Thank you. Good evening, leaders. Good evening. It's always a joy and a blessing to be in this class. And I thank God that we are able to meet. And I also look forward to the graduation that I can meet the rest of the cohorts. I mean, cohort 33 and looking forward for the graduation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Teresia. We really appreciate uh, your participation, your involvement. Uh, even in uh, facilitating sessions, I want to really appreciate that. So uh, today we are again going to have memorable uh, session. This is one of the sessions that uh, I, I it always lingers in my mind because it's it addresses real issues that are happening within our leadership uh, environment. 
and allow me to say a prayer then uh, we'll be able to quickly just uh, recap a little bit and then move on to tonight's discussion uh let's say a prayer heavenly god uh, we're always grateful that we have an opportunity together as leaders just to come share encourage one another and be a source of inspiration to one another uh, thank you even for the bond, that connection that you have created through this virtual environment. Uh, and, and we feel connected. We feel uh, that indeed is something that uh, we, we are sharing. There's something that we, we, we have for each other. And uh, we want to pray even as we prepare for the big day uh, on 25th of November. Lord, that you will guide us, you will lead us to that day. We pray for your favor. Even tonight, as we continue with the conversation, we pray for your wisdom and your guidance. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. So I know uh, the rest of us will be joining us briefly, but uh, let's uh, uh, start this conversation. And I want to start today by uh, sharing this riddle. And uh, I'll, read, I'll invite you just to share just take a guess. If you know the answer, well and good. We appreciate. Uh, if you don't know the answer, you could also take a guess and then we'll see. So this is the riddle. I am full of holes, but I can still hold water. What am I? I'm full of holes, but I can still hold water. What am I? Could I invite uh, I guess on this, or if you know the answer, feel free to share. Just to I guess it's the spawn. Ah, yes, yes, Betty. You are well done, well done, Betty. You are right. It's a sponge, yeah, full of holes, but can still hold water. Uh, thank you so much. We appreciate and celebrate you for that answer. Thank you. Uh, we have another one. I'm part of the bird that is not in the sky. I can swim in the water, but always stay dry. What am I? Okay, let's take a guess on this as well. Yeah, I'm part of the bird that is not in the sky. I can swim in the water, but always stay dry what am i let me invite you to take a guess on this uh it's a shadow you are right you are right wow wow thank you so much it's a shadow they are right thank you uh Teresia. so leaders last week uh we had a, a conversation on two areas. Uh, we looked at um, lesson uh, twelve and also lesson thirteen, and and I want just uh, I want us to take uh, maybe uh, about three minutes or so just to be able to reflect back. Let's reflect back on the lesson of the power of uh, purpose, uh, and uh, what are some of the key issues that can still uh, uh, we, we can still just be able to think through. Maybe there's something that you've been thinking through over the week because the beauty of this big conversation is that we're able to pick something, uh, probably just one, two, or three that we can run with. Uh, there are times we have shared in this class and uh, uh, a number of us have indicated we have even initiated some changes because of what the discussion that we have had. So I will just want to, because of the course of time maybe we could just um, have two people sharing you feel free to pick from any topic either the power of purpose or the power of character uh, any outstanding issue any outstanding thoughts that uh, we shared uh, as you think through uh, there's this nice quote here and maybe i could request if there is here you could uh, read for us this quote uh, which again is part of the reflection of what we have covered. Uh, Teresia, kindly. Okay. You are required as a leader to have a clear vision 
and purpose in mind to achieve success. Your vision acts as a compass, driving you towards a future that you envisioned, while your purpose gives you the direction and motivation to work towards that goal. This clarity and confidence in your vision and purpose inspires your team and your people to work with passion and loyalty towards achieving that shared goal. Yeah, thank you, uh, Teresia. This sort of a summary as well, uh, encompassing the power of vision, the power of purpose, uh, especially those two areas. Uh, and as we reflect back, probably we could also try to connect with this message uh, from what uh, we shared. So allow me just to invite um, uh, two of us uh, just to be able to share what could have been outstanding from the previous conversation. Uh, then we'll move on to uh, the, the discussion uh, for tonight. So uh, anybody just feel free to unmute or even on the chat. Uh, anything that you could you, you can reflect uh, from our week our last week's um, uh, conversation. Okay, so let me just open it up, then we can share briefly. Uh, maybe I can say something. Uh, yes, Beatrice. Um, I can I can talk of something that uh, stuck with me, and uh, uh, on the topic of the power of purpose. Uh, it's a it's a quote from Simon Sinek where it says that people do not buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So from this, uh, what you're doing, if you don't have a clear purpose of why you're doing it, then you cannot be able to convince others to follow you or join you in doing it or in accomplishing that particular task. So encourage uh, probably others to join you and probably even to help you in accomplishing that particular uh, purpose that you have. So your why should be very convincing so that it can attract others. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Beatrice. That's a very powerful message. And uh, even for me, when I came through that the first time, I think that that message really stuck with me. Uh, and I started looking at why sometimes people don't even buy to a vision try to sell a vision and there is a struggle for people to buy the vision probably the issue could be the clarity in terms of uh, purpose so thank you so much let me uh, take one more then uh, uh, we start uh, lesson uh, 14 for tonight Yes, uh, just one more. Maybe Betty, in case there is any reflection you could share, or Margaret, or Teresia. Meanwhile, I want to invite Maureen to start sharing the screen. Hello, all. I think uh, what I can say is that as a leader, we have to have a vision and a strategy on how to accomplish the vision that we already have. Yeah. And as we have said that you, we have to check or to look more on the why, and that is what uh, people look for. So we have to be sure and uh, and also focused on the why. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Teresia. 
Yeah, uh, the power of purpose was quite profound and uh, it is still something that we can still uh, reflect on. As we transition to tonight's discussion, again, a very, very important conversation tonight. Personally, I'm looking forward to this because uh, uh, I've listened to this, I've facilitated, but I still feel there's something, there's something new that I'm able to learn from this um, discussion. So tonight we are so privileged to have uh, one of us, um, uh, Maureen, uh, Maureen uh, Keguro. Uh, Maureen was uh, in cohort um, uh, 33, and uh, uh, Maureen came out very strong. She proceeded to undertake the trainers of leaders uh, after that. I remember we had a long conversation. The schedules were very tight, but uh, somehow we made it, and she went through the TOL. Uh, Maureen is a project coordinator. Uh, she works with uh, in touch uh, brands and um uh I'm, I'm sure there's there's that passion to facilitate being also a Sunday school teacher and a trainer in many other areas this comes out uh, uh, so natural uh, just that sharing opportunity to be able to share opportunity to share knowledge and to pass knowledge so we're so privileged. And uh, Maureen, you have a great team here. Uh, we have uh, uh, Beatrice with us. We have Margaret, uh, Teresia. Uh, Willie will be joining us shortly and uh, the others. And uh, this, this is a wonderful team. So just feel free to uh, use any approach to engage them. Uh, we look forward to also interact with you. Uh, so let me just invite Maureen just to take, it, take us through a lesson for team. Welcome. Good evening, leaders. Good evening, Maureen. It's uh, quite an honor to be able to present this uh, topic, which is a very important topic uh, to us leaders. And uh, I have I was given the profile of, of uh, the participants, and I was like, this are very good participants, these are wonderful leaders, and uh, it's so good for you to have chosen to take this course. It is a very bold step. It is, uh, for, for, for us, I think even Teresia can attest, it is a, a mind-changing, a life-changing uh, experience. And uh, I, I congratulate you for getting this far. It's not easy. Uh, sometimes adulting gets in the way. And uh, we don't get to the end. So I congratulate you to, for coming this far. Thank you for the resilience. And uh, we can now look at our topic for today, lesson 14, it is the second last topic. And uh, the power of mentorship and succession in leadership. You find that, uh, uh, like Isaac Newton says, I have seen father, it is by standing, if I have seen father, it is by standing on the shoulder of giants. Normally when even a child stands on your shoulders, they can see father. They can see more than you can see. As a leader, that is what we are supposed to aspire. Yes, you have a vision, but you can only take your vision so far because you have certain skills, you have certain uh, knowledge, but when you have somebody else that you have lifted up, the vision is, is uh, able to go further. It is able to go for another generation. So Isaac Newton is very correct. You become a stair for the ones that follow you. So to be successful, you really do have uh, to make sure that you have the strength to be able to carry someone else higher. Uh, leaders win by passing the baton. Uh, you find that when uh, there's a relay, there's one person who begins. And then as a team, you have to run and get the baton to the next team player. If the beginning, uh, the, the first person who does it, who runs is not fast enough, you find that you might lose that race. 
But then again, even if they are very fast and the next person is not fast enough, that's another reason again for you losing the race. So it's a kind of a partnership. So there's one who begins, they carry the vision that is like the baton and you pass it on to the next person and they carry it to the finishing line. Sometimes we are not able to carry the vision to the finishing line. We are not able to see the success of the vision, but being able to bring our followers up, being able to make the leaders, make them leaders, we are able to have others carry that vision. If you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. It's an African proverb. It's, it's, uh, we, we find that in Africa, we have so many people who are very knowledgeable. And this is one of the proverbs that you can see even with our vision bearers, our presidents. If they don't have others rallying behind them, it is very hard for them to carry that vision because they can only do so much. So it is very important to be able to carry others uh, and lift them up so that you can make sure that the vision goes further. A leader, leadership is not a sprint. It is a marathon, really. The most important part is not running. It is passing the baton. That's a quote by Miles Monroe. We know he's one of the greatest leaders. And his children are now, they receive the baton and they are carrying the ministry to a higher level. They are, being, they are able to reach out to the younger generation. So Miles Monroe can be said to be one of, a success, one of the successful leaders. Sometimes someone is sitting uh, in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. In the village when you go, uh, even if you plant a tree now, you will not enjoy the shade of that tree. Sometimes you might not even enjoy the fruits of that tree so easily. Like let's say the pomegranate, it takes like five years. So sometimes you can plant a tree and it takes so long, but you find our children and our children's children are able to uh, enjoy the shade under that tree. That's what Warren Buffett is talking about. What counts in life is not the mere fact that we live. It is what difference that is the tree we planted. We have made to lead to the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we lead. That's what Nelson Mandela said. So it is very important for us to have a vision because it is from that vision that goals are, are met, that uh, things that are inspired come forth. Like this tree, it comes from a seed and then it is watered. But unless somebody else continues to water it and protect it, that tree might be cut down, might be eaten by goats, and it might not grow to the point of somebody enjoying that shade. So as leaders, we need again to lift others. Mentorship is a core function of leadership. Great achievers are inspired by great leaders. Great leaders are great mentors. The highest level of unselfish thinking comes when you engage in mentorship giving yourself to other people for their personal development or well-being. We rise by lifting others. That is Ingersoll's saying. And I think we can all agree. We only rise when we lift others up. Because if you are to carry a vision and not bring others, we might not even see what that vision is all about. Like let's say if Wangari Madai just started uh, talking about environment and not educating others about the environment, we will not be able to see the Green Belt movement being able to work to date, be able to protect Karura forest and other resources. So tell me, what do you think mentorship? Who is a mentor? Have you experienced mentorship? Are you, have you been a mentor or a mentee? Maybe you can share something that uh, uh, or, or about that. Betty? Uh, 
um, my thinking is uh, a mentor is someone you look up to. A mentor is somebody we look up to. Thank you for that. Someone else? Maggie, would you like to try? Yes, let me try. Let me try. Um, I, I know I have also been a mentor. And uh, uh, though sometimes I confuse mentorship and coaching, I think because that is a, a thin line between the two. Um, because a mentor uh, work, 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 works alongside the mentee, uh, carrying out the same same activities, same skills, until uh, this uh, the mentee also is uh, is uh, drawing the 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 knowledge, the skills from actually the, the the doing. You see the the mentor whatever is actually uh, demonstrating the skills, and you do that until. The, the mentee is now also proficient to carry out uh, that skill perfectly, uh, perfectly and independently. Have you experienced being a mentor or a mentee? I have experienced being a both a mentee and a mentor. Ah, wonderful. So we can mm -hmm. proceed. Um, there are different paradigms of, uh, of mentorship. It's a relationship. So I win, I win, you lose, I only win once. You win, I lose, you win only once. We both lose, that's a goodbye to partnership. We both win, that means we win many times. It's a long-term partnership. The best relationships are a win-win. And selfish thinkers go into a relationship and make sure that the other person wins first. And that makes all the difference. So what is mentorship? As you've said, it's Margaret has mentioned, it's about teaching someone else. It's, it's like a sort of coaching. So according to Oxford, the guidance provided by a mentor, especially an experienced person, that is mentorship. Or B, it can be a relationship between two people where the individual with more experience, knowledge, and connection is able to pass along what they have learned. That's what something for Betty said. And a professional activity, a trusted relationship, a meaningful commitment. So you can see there is guidance, there is a relationship, and it has to be professional. Those are key things when it comes to mentorship. What are the qualities of a good mentor? A mentor builds trust, is an active and deep listener, is understanding, encourages, inspires, hope, and is reliable and authentic. A mentor builds trust. A mentor sees ahead of what others can see, inspires, coaches others to navigate a course of discovering, developing and releasing their inert potential. A mentor is a secure leader who thrives in growing other leaders. So you don't just have followers, people who become like a psychophant, but they tend to want to be more like you. So you pull them up so that they also become leaders. So these are the qualities of a good mentor. These are trust, there's the vision, seeing uh, what others cannot see, and then there's the, uh, the security that a leader drives in growing other leaders. They don't feel selfish when others have some skills they don't have. They take that as an asset to grow the vision. A mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside of yourself. That's what Oprah Winfrey says. 
when you are growing others to be leaders, then you are allowing them to see the hope inside. You're also, a mentor is someone who sees more talent and ability within you than you see in yourself and helps bring it out of you. That's what Bob Proctor says. You find that a mentor will notice there are things that uh, you are able to do that even you yourself, you might not have noticed. Someone will pull you out and say, uh, you're so good at leading. You're so good at being a counselor. You're so good at uh, calculations. You're so good at seeing the, the finer details. So that is what a mentor uh, is able to see. The greatest good you can do for another is not just to share your riches, but to reveal him his own. So if, if you see some richness in someone, some skills, some knowledge, as a mentor, you point that out. You bring out the best in that person. If your action inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you're a leader. So we question ourselves, are we leaders? Do we inspire others to dream more, to learn more, to do more, to become more, to inspire to be leaders? A leader takes people where they want to go. A, greater, a great leader takes people where they don't necessarily want to go, but ought to be. So sometimes you have to take the bulls by the horn and be able to lead others. It is normally not a very comfortable situation, comfortable environment, but as a leader, it is that discomfort that grows us. A mentor empowers a person to see a possible future and believe it can be obtained. That is what Sean says. So it is, it is for you as a mentor to be able to bring out the mentee's hope, to believe it can be obtained. Sometimes they don't see how, but because of the things that you have gone through, the experiences, the failures, the successes, you are able to share that and believe, make them believe that it can be obtained. So this is like a recap of the qualities of a good mentor. So it begins right at the bottom. First, you have to build the trust. Then you are able to listen and encourage. Then you have also to be reliable because you can't start mentoring somebody and fall out in between. You might make them not believe in themselves not be able to see the good in themselves. Then have fun in the, in, within, with it all. Have fun with it all. So you can, you, can, you can build that relationship, yeah? By having fun, being reliable, listening, encouraging. Then once you build that trust, you bring out that mentee to be able to go the extra mile, to be able to reach where they're supposed to go because sometimes they don't see it. So it is you as a mentor to be able to take them to that step. Why do we mentor? Leaders, why do you think we need to mentor? Anybody? Welcome, William. Would you like to share? Beatrice? Okay. Do you I can see that. Thank you. Yes, I can. Okay, I can see that uh, we mentor. Mm -hmm. to build others mm -hmm. and to impart uh, the kind of knowledge that we have and the skills that we have yeah. in mm -hmm. preparation for succession. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the possibility of uh, preparing to hand over the baton and kind of succession preparation. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Beatrice. That is uh, quite elaborate. Anyone else would like to add something? 
Uh, yes, I uh, would love to add something. Thank you, William. Uh, why we need mentorship or why we need to mentor? Uh, basically, mentors support the growth of a person. So we need uh, to encourage and enable another person's profession or to go pro to to grow professionally. So mentorship is a key thing in somebody's life, and it also helps us in giving feedback and uh, setting the goals that uh, help us align uh, one's life. Thank you. Thank you very much, William. I can see we have learned so much the last uh, 13, <laughs> 13 topics. You're doing so well. Indeed, uh, mentorship, uh, it's, it's a way to grow others. Yeah. Why do we mentor? We mentor uh, because it is teamwork. You cannot do it alone. You have an organization. You cannot be everything, you, you, and you cannot be at uh, the top all the time. There is a point where you need to either carry a new vision or step down. I am very conscious of the fact that you cannot do it alone. It is teamwork. When you do it alone, you run the risk that when you are no longer there, nobody else will do it. That's what Mangari Mathai uh, showed us even in reality with Green Belt Movement. Mentorship is a secure way to preserve the future. The greatest act of leadership is what happens in your absence. As a leader, if everything you have achieved dies with you, you are a failure. Success without a successor is failure. Wherever you are as a leader, if you are not there today, will things still run? Yeah. Will things still go smoothly? Or are there areas that will break down? Are there areas that will fail? That is how you test succession. Sometimes step back. Sometimes move away and see how the people who are following you, the people you are pulling up as leaders, how are they doing? In that way, you can even discover skills and knowledge that they have that be, can be an asset to that vision. So it is a secure way to preserve the future. It is also a secure way to uh, secure the next generation. The sure way to secure the next generation is to mentor. We found that uh, many a times, even in the government, we had people retiring and nobody to take up their jobs. So sometimes even their retirement uh, is extended so that somebody now can learn. But currently, you are, we are seeing that people are being brought up to be able to take up these positions, to be able to sit in those chairs and guide others. Mentorship is our gift to the next generation. Uh, mentorship is a way to protect and sustain leadership achievements and impact. The sure way to safeguard, sustain our leadership achievements and impact is to the mentor. It is a way to achieve an impact because if we, we don't mentor others, mm -hmm. then there's little we can achieve. And these are, uh, we cannot sustain that leadership uh, achievement. It is the path to true legacy. The sure way to build and preserve a worthwhile legacy is to mentor. Mentorship is the path to true legacy. A secure legacy is anchored and sustained in people not just intangible assets. I will again mention Miles Monroe. He left a legacy. He will be mentioned. He will still be mentioned. He is still a household name up to date. His materials are still being used up to date to help others, to inspire others. And even his children are using the same materials to be able to continue to teach and they're building their own materials. Now that is a legacy. Mentorship is the overall measure of success in leadership. We succeed in leadership when we mentor. The most important part of leadership is not leading, but passing the baton. Success in leadership is anchored on success of a successor. So without a successor, your leadership has failed. Mentorship must be intentional. 
That is how you mentor. You have to be intentional. You cannot just assume. You cannot just uh, let other people just take up roles without them mentoring them because your vision might not be carried. They might be starting their own vision. So it is very intentional. It is done on purpose. Mentorship requires match making. There should be a match between the mentor and the mentee based on the field of interest, passion, knowledge, skills, and experience. There is no way a medical profession can mentor an accountant. There's a mismatch. So in an organization, in all the followers you have, there are people you will see, this one is good at people skills. This one is good at marketing. This one is good at... So you are able to mentor them at their different skills. You are able to bring somebody up to take up your leadership roles if they are able to see the vision that you have they are able to carry that vision in the same way. They have the same passion. As we studied, it is very important to have passion for a vision, otherwise that vision will die. Mentorship thrives in a mentorship culture, a mindset, and an environment. A mentor and mentee should endeavor to cultivate a mentorship culture and environment. Mentorship requires authenticity. Both success and failure should be embraced as channels of learning. To inspire people, share your success story. But to impact people, share your hidden stories, the failures and the struggles. Valuable lessons can be deprived from both success and failure. So don't hide your wounds. Don't hide your failures. Don't hide the challenges that you faced. Because they learn from those experiences. Yeah, don't just tell them, I started my chicken uh, business with a feather. That's what some people say. But tell them what were the struggles. Sometimes even the chicken died. Sometimes you didn't know how to feed them. They weighed less and even the buyers did not want to buy them. Those are some of the things you need to share with them so that they don't make the same mistakes, but begin at a better level. Be the shoulders that they need to see further. Mentorship is futuristic. Habits take time to develop. Mentor and mentee should value today but visualize tomorrow. They should take advantage of the moment but be motivated by the desired future. Looking at the future, standing at the shoulders, seeing further. Mentorship is a process. It cannot be done within a day. It can be compared to a farm-based success system. What you sow, you reap. Mentorship requires investments on systems and processes and people. So yes, you have a mentee, but what is the system you have? Because if you're bringing that somebody in a place where there are no systems, they're going to be struggling. They're not going to start at a higher level. They're going to be maybe even worse than where you started. So that really is not mentorship. It is a process and it involves people. Mentorship requires a methodology. Develop methods and systems to help in mentorship matching, communication alerts, and tools to manage and track the progress of mentorship, including creating a mentorship agreement, learning, learn, progress, mentoring, and feedback surveys. So it is important to note down everything as a mentor and allow the mentee to be able to note down the progress. It is not a one-sided uh, situation, but it is a partnership that needs both sides to balance. Mentorship is achieved outside of a comfort zone. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. So you have to be patient with the mentee, be persistent, be consistent, focus. Because if you as a mentor don't exercise these uncomfortable uh, experiences, then you're not able to, to mentor your mentee. The mentee might get tired, so you'll need the patience. The mentee might veer off the path, so you need to be persistent. And you also need to be consistent so that 
they can build, see the system, they can see the methodology and stay focused. Mentorship requires open-mindedness for both mentor and mentees. The process ignites two-way learning, adjustments of priorities, and development of new habits. Mentorship should be fun. Embrace creativity. Pause to celebrate even little success in the process of mentorship. Mentorship demands consistent personal growth to both mentor and mentee for, future, for mutual benefit. You can only give what you have. A mentor and a mentee should be perpetual learners. Remember our uh, triple loop. You have to transform, continue learning, continue learning. You it's, uh, have the agility to learn all the time because even the mentee has something that you don't know. So as you learn, you're also lifting them up. They're also being able to make them see their skills and their talents. There are three C's of mentorship. A mentor is an experienced, trusted advisor. Mentors share knowledge, experience, and provide a support system. Mentors provide specialized recommendations based on a wealth of industry knowledge, and they share their own industry insights gained through years of real world experience. Mentors are often experienced in areas that mentees are not. So you have to be an expert in your area. There's no way you can mentor somebody when you yourself are still groping in the dark. So it is very important for you to be an expert in what you do. The key roles, uh, importance of the success of a mentor-mentee relationship. One, one role is console, consultant. That is being the expert. There's no way you can be a, called a consultant, let's say in economics or in medicine, when you yourself don't know the knowledge that is uh, expected of you. So to be a, called a consultant as a mentee, because that mentor, men, as a mentor, the mentee is going to be coming back to you to consult you. Uh, so you need to listen and to guide, but don't give away all the answers. Of course, you have had years to be able to become that expert. So you give them in bite size, give that knowledge in bite size, because if you pour out everything, so much will be lost. So you just give in small bite size. Don't give away all the answers. And as a counselor, a mentor provides guidance, but not answers, enabling their mentee to figure out the right course of action individually. That is how the mentee learns. The choice between a consultant or a counselor depends on the mentee's learning style. So you have to note, how does this mentee learn? Does he or she come back to me to ask? Or do I need to keep probing as a counselor to be able to help them learn? By allowing mentees to navigate the situation individually, they not only uncover the answer to their immediate problem, but also learn a lifelong skill that will serve them well into the future. In addition to providing constructive feedback and advice, a mentor should also provide support and the enthusiasm. That's the third role, being a cheerleader. No matter how small the success of the mentee is, you need to celebrate them. Imagine a child who is beginning to walk. The little claps, the excitement, it makes them want to walk more. Even when you yourself, in your organization when you began, if the person who is your supervisor congratulates you on a task, you want to do more, you want to impress them, you want to learn more and ex exercise the skills that you have. So as a mentor, it is very important to be a cheerleader. A mentor should help celebrate a mentee's success, no matter how big or small. So you need to be a, a consultant, you need to be a counselor, and you need to be a cheerleader. Note, a mentor should know when it is important to switch roles, whether the mentor is being a consultant, a 
counselor or cheerleader. Transparency and communication are two important aspects of a successful mentor-mentee relationship. So be transparent and keep the communication flowing. Listen and also be heard. Being a mentor is more important than telling someone. It means sharing expertise with a consultant's mindset, guiding them along their journey without giving away all the answers and being a cheerleader that the mentee needs it most. So leaders, you have in some way acted as cheerleaders. You have in some way acted as consultant. We have in some way acted as uh, uh, counselors. Anybody would like to share a situation where you are either a counselor, a cheerleader, or a consultant? Leaders. Betty, would you like to share something? Beatrice, maybe you have something you can share. How have you been a counselor? How have you been a consultant? How have you been a cheerleader? Maybe you've mentored somebody. I know we have had some experiences of mentoring somebody. In what way have you been a cheerleader, consultant, or a counselor? Mm. I don't know whether to give a long experience. <laughs> I'll show Just a it. short one so that I don't keep you yeah. here. <laughs> Just yeah. a short one. Thank you. So I, have, I have had an experience where uh -huh. I was I was I was teaching in some school uh -huh. and there was there was this man, he was a senior a senior person who was seated at the corner always and never participating in those discussions of, you know, staff discussions. And one day I got hold of him and I realized that I kind of became a, a, a counselor to him because I, I asked him, why, why do you keep off? Why do you, you know, why do you stay alone at the corner? Then he told me about the frustrations he had with the transfers and all that. And uh, I told him, why can't you try even going on study leave or, or try something else, try something new? Mm -hmm. So he tried, he tried, he tried out, he went for a study leave, he finished his master's. And when I met him the next time, he had a very nice suit. He was now a, a lecturer in a, in a university and he was telling me that I'm the one who removed him from the, the dungeon. And, you know, I felt like I became a mentor to him in a way and mm -hmm. probably... A counselor, or I don't know whether it falls under counseling mm -hmm. or consultation. Mm -hmm. Somehow, I think I, I, I mentioned. Wow, that's a very yeah. wonderful example. Uh, sometimes you, you, the mentorship is very short, but it creates a very big inter impact. Like you, your example, it took just a, a small session to be able to get them to see the best in themselves, to be able to get them to see further than what they are seeing, to get out of their comfort zone. Indeed, you are a counselor there. Thank you very much for that example. Anyone else would like to share? Let me not close you out. Okay, okay, leaders, it is okay. Thank you very much for that example, Beatrice. Uh, we, it is as a mentor, we, we have noted there are times you become a consultant, there are times you become a counselor, and there are times you become a cheerleader. So you will switch up these roles as necessary, depending on the mentee, depending on the situation, depending on the level of growth. So all the best as you mentor. Now we continue to see the four phases of uh, mentorship uh, relationships. A successful mentorship relationship goes through four phases, preparation, negotiating, enabling growth, and closure. 
These sequential phases build on each other and vary in length. They depend on the mentee. They depend on the, the situation. They depend on what the vision carries. Sometimes the vision is very large and the preparation session has to be longer or the negotiating session becomes longer, enabling growth and maybe the closure. So let us look at uh, these four phases. Preparation. Strategies of preparing the relationship. You have to initiate contact with your mentee. As a mentor, you have to get in contact with that mentee. Exchange background information before you talk for the first time. Prepare them, prepare their mind. What is the vision? What is the purpose? Who are you? How, how have you come this far? Take time to get to know each other so that you also know, do they carry that vision? Are they, do they feel they're competent? What other ways are? Do, you don't know maybe about them. Maybe you've just experienced them shortly and you are seeing something. Maybe they can tell you more about themselves. Share past mentor, mentoring experiences and those who influenced us. Talk about the learning and development goals. Determine the personal expectations of the relationship. What do you need from your mentor? Define the deliverables and desired outcomes. So you have to start somewhere. You have to be able to uh, take uh, what do you want to achieve? Those are the deliverables. What do you want to achieve either in the organization, either in carrying a certain vision, either in a community. Sometimes you want to step down at a certain point. What are, is expected of them when you step down? So they need to be able to know what the, 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 the deliverables are. Candidly share personal assumptions and limitations. Sometimes you might say, oh, this vision takes this long. Uh, or this vision is limited by this. So they need to know. They need to know. And you also need to hear from them. Discuss personal and learning styles. You need to know how your, your mentee learns. Because sometimes people need uh, to, more of a counselor. Some, again, need, need, need more of a consultant. They need to go out, do whatever they need to do, and then come back to consult you. I, I got stuck here. How do I solve this? But there are other people who need more of counseling. They need you to probe them, to push them. But that doesn't mean that they are less of a leader or less of a potential. So you just need to learn them. There are people who need cheering. They, need, they, they might have some uh, limitations. Yeah? They need you to build their self-esteem. They need you to, uh, to be able to bring out the hope in them, the, uh, the, the, what they can be able to achieve. Then you come to the negotiation. How much time can be committed to the relationship on a regular basis? Be realistic. You can't say we meet every evening. It is not realistic. You need to uh, get a time frame. How much can they learn? Maybe let's say in a week to start with. Then you take it maybe to two weeks. Yeah. Then maybe a month. Then stretch it out like that. So just be realistic. Then write down goals and analyze them to meet the SMART criteria. I believe we know what SMART means. Agree on a discussion format. Are you going to do formal agendas or topic-driven agendas, check-in conversations, etc.? How are you going to discuss the milestones? How are you going to tick and say, this is the far that we have come. This is the far we are going. This is what is remaining. Are you going to make it formal? Is it topic driven? Is it check-in conversations? Are you going to call in and ask how you're doing? Use a journal to help stay focused. Monitor progress and capture the follow-up items. This is very important for both the mentor and the mentee. There's no way you will be able to mentor somebody if you cannot see how far you've come and how far you, have, you are at the moment. And the only way to see that is be able to generalize, be able to uh, put down what, how, how, where did we begin? What are the challenges? Have we overcome these challenges? 
And if we did, how did we overcome these challenges? So that when you face a similar challenge next, you're able to bypass that challenge faster. So documentation is very important. Establish any ground rules. Are there confidentiality agreements? Are there boundaries? Are there hot topics? Hot topics are those things that uh, you would like them to have keen uh, attention on. Or there are things that you'd like to tackle urgently and necessarily. Sometimes you find somebody has a tendency not to be punctual. It is very important for them to be punctual, to be able to play that role. So that could be one of the hot topics. What is the vision? Are they able to note down the vision and how far you've come? Because that is one of the things that is important for the mentee to know. Be flexible. Expectations and plans will change as your relationship progresses. Yes, you said every Friday. What if something changes? Are you able to be flexible? You say that you're going to meet physically. If somebody travels, are you able to find another way to keep in touch, to be able to check in on each other? Evaluate progress, milestones, goals regularly. Don't, even if you're supposed to meet, let's say in a month, be able to see are the milestones being crossed. There are many ways that we can be able to tackle milestones. There are many platforms that can be used to be able to uh, note down the milestones, whether we have crossed these milestones or not. Are we meeting our goals? You can use a chat, a Gantt chat. You can be able to use uh, some uh, Gantt chat tools like MS Project. You can use uh, Dupsado. There are many ways that you can use to be able to check on milestones. What are the learning styles? These are important. Identify and discuss successful learning. Do not impose your learning style on your mentee. Be able to learn from them, listen to them, and be able to learn what is their learning style. Articulate criteria for success. What does success look like? Is somebody able to speak before others? Is he able to communicate maybe through emails? Is he able to deliver work on time? What are the success criteria? Can you say now you have come this far, take this, you're doing well. You have to have a success criteria. So this is the negotiation part. Are they agreeing with this part? These are very sensitive part and your mentee has to be get on board. Yes, you've prepared them, but this is where you negotiate. You have to agree. You have to be on the same page. Then now enable growth. So you regularly check in, actively listen and advise. To be a counselor, you have to listen. Otherwise, you will be jumping the gun. Ask for and give feedback so that the learning experience is satisfactory and the pace is comfortable. Sometimes we are too fast. Sometimes we are too slow. Provide timely support, create appropriate challenges to facilitate learning. Here is where you become the consultant. Solicit feedback from other sources. Uh, how is he doing? Uh, how do you, how can you see uh, him as your leader? Be able to check on how others he's supposed to be pulling up, how are they taking it? Use the time together productively. Evaluate goals and deadlines throughout the process. Give constructive criticism and accept and reflect on it. Do not put somebody down if they are not able to do it. B, give constructive criticism. Then accept and reflect on it. If, let's say your mentee mentions something, don't get upset. This is a learning relationship for both of you. It also helps you become a better mentor. So if he tells you you're too fast, don't get upset and throw your hands in the air and say, you, you cannot be a leader. No, you have to be patient. You have to listen. You have to accept and reflect on it the same way for the mentee. Advise on what you know. Don't be afraid to admit what you don't know. Sometimes the mentee has some resources that you don't have. 
or you can find other resources if you can't provide guidance. Tell them, you've asked this question. Allow me to consult, allow me to research. As a mentor, it is very okay to be able to put out your weaknesses because the only reason why you're not able to carry this vision to the finishing, it is because you cannot do this alone. You have to do it as teamwork. Don't shy away from difficult conversations. It is a safe place to talk. For somebody to carry your vision, they are supposed to be feel safe. They are supposed to be able to carry that vision with the passion that you also carry it. So as a mentor, are they feeling safe? Are they able to communicate? Are they able to give you feedback honestly? And are you listening? Then celebrate each small success. Don't feel too big of a person and say, uh, you were supposed to be able to address the organizational meetings, but you are not able to. You were supposed to be able to do a presentation, but you are not able to. Maybe they started and got nervous in the middle. Congratulate them and take up from where they have left off. The next time they do the presentation, they'll do it better. So it is the only way they are going to grow. So celebrate each small success. And it gets to a point this person has become so good at what they are doing. And you have to come to closure. Consider what you want your mentoring relationship to look like after the formal relationship concludes. Yes, you've been meeting. You'd said you're going to do this mentorship for a year. We are coming to the end of that year. How are they doing? Are you ready to close? Be sensitive to when the relationship should end. It is not something that should go on forever. At, at some point, you have to let go of the reins. Find a personal way to express your feelings about the experience. Give and receive thanks. Even if you're disappointed in the outcome, identify and express the positive benefits you gained as a result of being in the mentorship relationship. It is a very good way to say, you also gained something as a mentor, such that that person doesn't feel that they were in a lecture room, but they were also, it's, it was a mutually beneficial relationship. Take time to consider what you learned and identify what you will do differently in another mentoring relationship. So you become a better mentor with each mentee's success. Then take some time to celebrate. I mean, your vision has received somebody else to be able to carry it. So take time to celebrate because a leader who has a successor is worth celebrating. They have left a legacy. So it is worth celebrating. There are five steps of leadership development or mentorship. I uh, will give an example of, let's say your son or your daughter, you're teaching them a skill. You do it, I do it, and you watch. So as the mentor, I do it and you watch. And then we talk about it. I do it, you help. Then we talk about it. You do it, I help. We talk about it. Please have in mind that daughter, that uh, young person, that in turn that you have. We are at number four. You do it, I watch, we talk. Are we growing? I believe we are. Number five, step number five, you do it, someone else watches. Do you see how we've left a legacy? Do you see how the, mentor, the mentee is now becoming a mentor? That is how we grow a legacy. That is how we pass on the baton. That child you are teaching how to cook chapati can now cook chapati and teach another person. Yeah. So we are able to teach some skills and be safe, feel, make them feel safe enough to be able to do it. That intern that has come, that new employee in your organization, they are able to take on tasks and do them successfully. 
Otherwise, you would find that you have too much work you're doing because you want to do it alone. We have talked about our teamwork. The only way to have a team that is successful, the only way you can step away and the objective, the goal is still met, is be able to go through these five steps. I do, you watch, we talk. I do it, you help, we talk. Then you do it, I will help. Then we talk about it. Then now you do it, I watch. I'm not longer helping, I'm just watching. Then we talk about it. Here is where you have seen the greatest growth. Then the mentee is doing it and someone else is watching. So as a mentor, are you growing more leaders? Are you able to make other mentees, uh, the mentees to become mentors? Now that is the success of mentorship. As purpose-centered and vision-driven global leaders, we should focus on nurturing successors. Our greatest contribution to the future generation is our successors. Success without a successor is failed leadership. That is a fact. We safeguard and solidify our leadership through mentorship. We lead and influence through inspiration, empowerment, and mentorship. And that is how we become wonderful mentors and successful leaders. Thank you. I would like to hear from our members. Thank you so much. Is there something you have uh, learned, something new you have learned? William, are you there? Um, I, I'm glad to, tonight to learn that, uh, especially where the, the level of uh, the persistence, the patient, being patient with the mentee, uh, especially where a, a mentee may not only seem to be going, um, moving slowly or slow, but also unwillingness. So that's what uh, I would uh, today say, uh, with the persistence and encouragement, would be how that is to, to finally add up one winning this uh, the mentee. Thank you very much, uh, Maggie. Uh, it is, yes, it is important to be willing. It is intentional, just as, as we be began. You said it is an intentional relationship. Beatrice, do you have something to say about our session on mentorship and succession? Okay, I think we have had a great session uh, this evening. You were done just the, to, the, to this particular topic. And I'm learning that there is, we really need to be intentional when it comes to mentorship, it doesn't just happen by chance. Uh, I looked at the the steps, the, the steps, uh, the faces of mentoring relationships, huh? mm -hmm. and you know, of intentionality. And you know, I remain. I I got a question. You know, I mm -hmm. was questioning myself. How often do you really have that mm -hmm. patience to mm -hmm. mentor? How often? Do you others on board and we really train them with a lot of patience and with a lot with intention they are going to grasp whatever that we desire of them so i felt as a leader that i need to do something um, i need to to be more intentional in the way i do things and um, yeah, that's my reflection for the evening thank you oh, thank you very much betty Um, I've learned uh, a lot from today's session. Um, what I'm taking home with me is uh, you need to build trust in uh, your mentoring as someone. You have to be committed uh, to mentoring them. Um, make sure you cheer them even with the smallest successes. That way, they'll keep on, uh, you'll encourage them to move forward. Wonderful. 
William, is William back? William, are you still connected? Yes, I am. Uh, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from this session. And uh, basically, the the lessons that I've learned from this mentorship uh, them are things that are going to help me when whatever I'm doing. And uh, I appreciate so much for the lessons. Welcome, William. Thank you very much, Betty, Beatrice. Uh, I see we have some or 33 members. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you, Teresia. Teresia, would you like to say something? Sure, thank you so much. It was a great lesson. We've learned so much and a lot. And what I can say is the take home is that mentorship, as we've seen, is uh, securing and preserving the future. So not necessarily leaving a legacy only, but also securing and preserving that future. And the great example that you gave us of Miles Monroe and how the children uh, took it up from where he left and they are doing it so well. So a future is preserved and a legacy is left. Thank you. Thank you so much, Teresia. I think that can be our parting shot. You'll we'll give it back to chair. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I have learned so much from you. <laughs> uh, you you've done wonderful mentorship. So thank you. Wow. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Maureen. Uh, is this uh, an area of your passion, Maureen? It is. It is, yeah. and thank you for the platform. Thank you for the platform uh, to train. It is yeah. uh, something that I've been wanting to do, but I didn't have the platform. And uh, having been able to attend the trainers of leaders, it gave me that drive. Thank you. You are a wonderful leader. You are really passing that baton. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, actually, I could tell from the delivery, this is coming from your heart, uh, waiting to see by the time we'll be facilitating the fifth session. Uh, I, I can't, can't wait. Uh, leaders, I think uh, that has been a very sober discussion. I Personally, I was just seated here and uh, just uh, trying to reflect quite a lot. Uh, and I think some of the questions I was asking myself, uh, how are we faring in this area as leaders and, and, and beyond us? Yes, here we are, but looking out there in terms of the organizations that we are, are leading or where we are serving or where we are working, how are we doing in terms of mentorship? If we are to take a random uh, num a random figure, Probably we want to rate our performance one out of ten. Uh, what what would would our rating look like? Yeah, so that we we just want to see how is the situation. Yeah, and and what do we need to do? I, I know this has been part of what we've been reflecting on at a personal level. So you could you could think through that. Uh, if we are to rate ourselves, we are to rate even our own organizations. How would we rate uh, those organizations and how would we rate ourselves on a scale of one to ten? The second question, uh, if you are to leave that organization today, who would take over? Is there someone? Uh, there's one of the speaker who says that you should never drop the mic, never drop the microphone. There should be someone else who should take up that microphone and continue uh, sharing the message. If the microphone drops, then that has a huge implication on how uh, we have been able to mentor and how we've been able to lead. So in that organization, in that home, in that chama, in that uh, family, uh, is there someone who can take up that role confidently and run with it? That's the other question that I want us to ask, uh, just to ponder about. Have we been intentional and structured in our mentorship? Probably we could also think about that because there are more benefit when we are intentional because, again, we have also to learn. 
we are so we are we have also to explore what are the best methods where are we we are able to measure our progress uh we we are able to actually uh be able to know where we are and where should we stop yeah uh how many trees have you planted how many lives have you touched how many in your, our own small way in our big way how many trees have we planted i like saying this we can use our energies in two way i can use my energy to lift other people up but at the same time it's possible to use our energy suppressing people or holding people down but a mentor will use their energy to be able to pull people up i think mentorship requires a wholehearted a way of leading it's something that calls for uh resources of all kind time uh, and many other resources that uh, we have so that it becomes successful i thought probably you could just think through this um uh, think through uh, what we have shared in addition to what Maureen has taken us through as part of our reflection uh let's think through this uh, even as we try to take this discussion beyond us uh, if we you have an opportunity to share this within your area of work or, or uh, the space of leadership please let's spread this message so that we can have more leaders coming up uh, in our in, in our midst thank you so much Maureen we really appreciate you and we celebrate you and um, thank you for accepting to uh, share your time with us and really say thank we really appreciate you I'm honored thank you very much good so uh, leaders we want to move on to the final discussion for tonight uh we look at uh, the speaking lesson of the day and then uh, after the lesson we'll just want to probably catch up on um how you you're, you're faring in terms of the project proposal uh and we just want to see what have you added from the last time that we we had uh the, the conversation so uh to build up and like sort of to sum up from lesson one to where we are want to briefly look at the power of personal growth and development uh and this is practically what we've been doing from the time we started and it's also uh, a way of climaxing and just trying to package everything that we have learned and also how do we maintain the momentum because uh, for the last uh, the last 10 weeks we've been building momentum and it's important to be able to think on how do we maintain this momentum so personal growth i like saying it calls for stretching it calls for stretching it means that we have to be smart in our growth and we have to be willing to sacrifice. We have also to consider the time factor because as we have said consistently, growth uh, is a process and therefore it requires time and that calls also for patience. A stretching also means that we have to be resilient. We have to adapt to the different environments. Sometimes you, have, you could project a straight line but along the way, when you start the journey, you realize the line is not straight. So how do we adapt to the different uh, terrains uh, as we continue to grow and maintain agility? Uh, environment, a growth, cultivating environment and mindset. And such a platform, such a, a setup is, is a perfect in, uh, example of a growth environment. Then we have tenacity. Yeah, a lot of determination, persistence. And why this is important is because we are moving from our comfort zones. Sometimes we have to stretch beyond uh, the the uh, beyond uh, the known uh, space. Yeah, so uh, that determination, consistency, yeah, constancy beyond intensity. It's good to be intense, but it's more important to be consistent. Yeah, that's really the game changer. Actually, consistency is a game changer. Uh, many people uh, start uh, undertaking some activities together, but you realize those who are consistent, eventually you, you can tell the difference. 
Yeah, I, I've seen this with the uh, weight loss um, initiatives. Yeah, people start together, but what brings the difference is how consistent, uh, uh, how the, the the teams or how the individual are able to be consistent. Then holistic, we have to grow the whole person. Spiritually, we have to grow physically, we have to grow intellectually, socially, and all that. Then incremental change, we're saying embracing continual improvement. Uh, novelty, the newness and freshness of strategies, that's very important so that we continuously be creative in terms of our growth. And then Finally, G is about growth mindset, openness to learn and learn and relearn. So this is stretching and this is what uh, personal growth, uh, we could say, is all about. It's about uh, embracing all these uh, key aspects that you have talked about. Uh, we shared this challenge when we were starting. What programs or activities are you engaging in currently for enhancement of your personal growth and development? Uh, and I believe... Uh, we can be able to cite a few from this, including the discussion that we're having tonight. Uh, it could be a professional development program, could be a research, could be some books you're reading or just some uh, a, a set of videos that you're watching. And also this program that we are going through. Uh, but beyond this, are there others that you could probably uh, identify as part of uh, your personal growth? Uh, and development. So uh, we have to position ourselves, in, uh, especially in the growth mindset, to uh, embrace a growth mindset. And that is what helps us to be able to be consistent in our growth. There are a few thoughts that are, are shared by some leaders here, one of them being James Allen. And he says that people are anxious to improve their circumstances but are unwilling to improve themselves. They therefore remain bound. Yeah, so uh, being anxious and also setting the goals calls for more than that. It calls for uh, sometimes getting into the right habits, it calls for positioning into the right environment. Yeah, it's normally said that we don't rise to our goals, but we fall to our systems. What systems? have I put uh, in place? Uh, Jim Ron, he said that we have to learn to work harder on ourselves than we do on our job. I think that's a challenge. Uh, if you work hard on your job, you can make a living, but if you work hard on yourself, you'll make a fortune. This is actually what, he, this was like his philosophy. It was his philosophy, uh, what he believed in, and uh, probably we could relate in different ways. Um, uh, and, and I think this this comes in with also development of the talent, development of other qualities beyond uh, probably the career. If there's no proper alignment, there are times we go beyond that and, and we want to grow uh, and nurture ourselves in a more holistic way. Uh, John Maxwell, the law of intentionality, yeah, growth does not just happen. It means we have to be very intentional about it. Yeah, and the sooner you make the transition to becoming intentional about our growth, then the better it is because growth will always compound. Yeah, and it also accelerates it accelerates as we remain intentional about it. So the issue of intentionality again comes in hand here in this uh, conversation as well. So what are we saying, leaders? We're saying that. Uh, we have to be intentional. That's one. Again, building from the last conversation, we have to be comfortable to stretch. Yeah. We have also uh, to be proactive in our growth. And we have to have a plan which will get us started. But discipline and consistency will be able to maintain our growth. Yeah. Consistency will, will be the game changer. Yeah, this is in line with what is known as the law of consistency. Consistent action will produce consistent results. There, there are very, um, very critical uh, uh, statements here uh, by these leaders, and it also connects with what we have 
mentioned about consistency. Yeah, successful people, they do consistently what others do occasionally. Successful people do consistently what others do occasionally. John C. Maxwell put it in another way that successful people do daily what unsuccessful people do occasionally. And he continues actually to add a few uh, thoughts in this. They produce daily disciplines, they implement systems for their personal growth, and they make it a habit to maintain a positive attitude. And maybe I could pose a question here as part of just our, uh, our reflection. Looking at what Craig said, successful people do consistently what others do occasionally. What are some of the these uh, uh, issues that we can identify here that are, are connected to the consistency of uh, or the consistent issues that successful people focus on that distinguish them from other uh, other leaders? What are some of those things that we can cite here? Yeah, that su successful people uh, do consistently. Maybe as we just try to jog our mind beyond what John C. Maxwell has, uh, has, has mentioned, are there some other additional uh, points that we could add to this? Just trying to think about ourselves, because I believe we also are successful leaders. What are those things that we do consistently uh, that maybe others do occasionally that sets successful leaders apart? Could I just maybe invite a few thoughts on this? either from your personal experience or even from a, the broader um, uh, look across the globe? Hello. Yes, Mr. Mongi. Yeah, probably I can uh, just speak on our successful marathoners. Mm -hmm. Like like uh, what do we call him? Paul Tergat, uh, the the current uh, five times winner. They, they do their they do their jobs on a daily basis at a given particular time of the day, mm -hmm. and they do it very consistently. So you cannot compare him uh, with somebody like me who will do it today. Then I go for another week without doing it. And that is how success has followed him uh, during his uh, uh, his his uh, wins over the years. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Mwangi. Uh, the, the, that brings in the aspect of a routine, uh, and they they are able to uh, maintain um, uh, consistently some certain routines. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mwangi. Uh, probably I could take one more. What do successful people do consistently that makes them stand out? Maybe I can see something. No. Uh, yes, Beatrice. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, setting daily targets or goals. Uh, can set someone or uh, can set a successful leader apart from others so that they have a guideline on what they intend to do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Beatrice. We are setting uh, clear targets every day and ensuring that uh, they are aligned to the targets. Uh, I've seen also they the, they are very conscious about their time. This is something that I've I've also noticed that if you really have to um, to be impactful, if you have to con consistently grow yourself, then you become very cautious of your time. How do I spend my time? With whom do I spend my time, uh, and and that really brings out uh, that distinction uh, as well. So thank you for sharing, uh, and and uh, we that 
quite aligned with what we are sharing tonight. Uh, a few thoughts again from other leaders as well. Uh, one of them again, John Maxwell, if you're growing, we are always going to be outside our comfort zone because growth, as we have said, comes with some stretching. Yeah, Albert Einstein said, strive not to be a success, but rather to be of value. Growth is about adding value to ourselves and we can't become what we need to be by remaining what we are. Yeah, so there's always um, that extra mile that really transitions us from who we are uh, probably to a better version uh, of ourselves. And uh, it's there is only one growth strategy, intentional, be intentional, then plan it out, then take action, be ready to stretch, and be consistent. And growth is our prophet. This is, again, in line with what we said. We don't rise to the level of our goals, but we rise to the level of our systems. We can be able to set goals of where we shall be tomorrow, but growth will take us to where we ought to be. So where I ought to be, my growth plan will eventually usher me to my space. Yeah, And that comes again with um, how consistent am I? Uh, how, uh, what kind of a plan do I have? Uh, how do I act on that plan? And then how am I consistent? So we grow towards opportunity by also pro preparing for opportunities. Yeah, sometimes when opportunities come, there might be no time to prepare. So we have to prepare uh, sometimes before the opportunities uh, show up. So as part of growth, uh, we have the issue of self-care, and I'm very happy uh, this is the area that you're focusing in uh, on in your, as, a, as your project proposal. Yeah, we're saying self-care is never a selfish act. It's simply good stewardship of the only gift you have, the gift I that I was put here to serve, here on earth, to offer to others. Anytime we can listen to true self and give the care it requires, then we do it not only for ourselves, but for the many others whose lives we touch. That's according to Parker Palmer. Yeah. So self-care is not being about it's not being selfish. It's about trying to care for ourselves so that we can be able to offer better care uh, to other to other people. Uh, there are these four essential factors of personal growth and development. And one is that we have to maintain focus. And focus here means uh, being careful so that we are not distracted. And secondly, it also means being very precise in terms of the area we want to grow in. Yeah, so we have to have a clear target. And again, we have also to maintain focus in terms of um, avoiding or noting uh, distractions. Consistency. I cannot uh, overemphasize that. Then resilience. Sometimes, as I said, things may not go as we plan. Um, there, there might be knockdowns. There might be bumps. But that ability to ensure that, yes, I, I need to be on my feet. Yeah, I need to be my on my feet, regardless of the circumstances. Then I need to consistently be able to measure where was I last year? Where am I now? that growth, uh, the, the, the growth uh, trajectory. Yeah, so those are some of the elements of um, uh, essential factors of personal growth and development. And Martin Luther King Jr., very insightful quote there, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. And I believe this is so, so important when it comes to personal growth and development. It's not the intensity, it is the consistency. It's not the intensity, it's the consistency. You might be, you might start with crawling, you might start with uh, walking, you might be in a position to run, you might be in a position to fly, but we're saying whatever, let's be very intentional and let's ensure continuously on a daily basis, the consistency factor is maintained, yeah, uh, beyond the consistency. 
Uh, a few thoughts from other leaders here. One of them, Robin Sharma, the swiftest way to triple your success is to double your investment in personal development. Personal development adds value. And, and in many cases, you note this. You will not, even within the areas probably where we are serving. The moment I'm very careful on my personal growth and development, it becomes clear, becomes clear. After a while, people are able to tell, people are able to notice, this is not the same Joseph we knew. Yeah, the kind of how he's articulating issues, how, he's, how he thinks, how he's uh, able to communicate, the, the, the content, the content is able to deliver. So people will be able to tell, and that is really what brings value and, and that's also what adds value uh, to us. But uh, from the iceberg perspective, yeah, success is what is seen, but beneath the success, there's a lot of effort that goes into personal growth and development. And you can see the hard work there. You can see the persistency. Sometimes the failures, sometimes disappointment, yeah? Uh, I noticed sometimes um, you, you can read a book and then when you try to reflect how much have I been able to retain and, and it's like you're wondering, wow, I finished this book. What, what can I remember about what I've read? There, there are times I could ask myself such questions until I started engaging in conversations and then when we are having a conversation, it, I started realizing the conversation could trigger something that I read, maybe, maybe even many years ago, but it was in the subconscious mind. It was only triggered when it was necessary. Yeah. So sometimes uh, we could feel like nothing is happening, but indeed something is happening. Sometimes just a trigger will be able to pull out uh, whatever was in us. So the iceberg of the, the success iceberg down there. The bigger portion is about personal growth and development. Uh, the acts, we've talked about this. Yeah, when we grow, we realize that even in our leadership, with less effort, we're able to gain, to get more results and even more impact. So the more we continue to sharpen ourselves, the more we continue to sharpen our acts, the more we realize our work becomes easier. Just as Abraham Lincoln said, if he had six hours to chop down a tree, he would spend the first four hours sharpening the axe. And leaders, you can remember we had a question on this earlier on. And we were asking ourselves, how many hours do we use to sharpen our axe? And how many hours do we use to lead? And probably, if we are straining, this could be one of the reasons. If there are leaders out there who are straining to lead, probably this could be one of the reasons. Maybe we are not using adequate time to develop ourselves. And I, we noticed this when we started these programs because we started reaching out to leaders and we could ask them, give us your leaders probably for one day, for two days, for three days. Let's spend time with them. And then do an evaluation, see how they are performing. And from our conversation, we realize there are leaders who are appointed into uh, positions of leadership, but they are not capacity built. And therefore, even with a lot of passion, they are using a lot of effort, 80% getting 20% results. That's quite frustrating to them as leaders. It's also frustrating to the appointing authority. But where is the problem? It's about capacity. So as we spend more time in personal development, in growth, we realize it also has many other effects in terms of uh, even uh, getting more, uh, more results. So what are we talking about personal growth and development? Uh, it's good to note that it's a continuous lifelong process and it entails the issues to do with the personal discovery. It entails development, probably of particular areas that we've been able to uh, filter out in the discovery journey, then improving our skills and even other abilities, 
yeah, the, including the strength, including the potential. And why do we do this? So that we can be effective, we can be efficient, and we can ensure that there is that continuous curve uh, in terms of our growth. And we talked about it has to be holistic. We have to look at the physical, to look at the emotional, intellectual, spiritual, all these dimensions. When I was uh, undertaking my studies um, in Korea, I like using this example just because this is a small team where we share our own personal experiences sometimes for the benefit of just uh, maximizing our value here. Uh, we were challenged to undertake a Taekwondo class. And one of the professor asked us, if you work very hard intellectually and you don't work very hard on your taking care of your physical health, then for how long shall you enjoy the benefits? Because yes, they are intellectually you are doing very well, but how are you doing physically? And that was a challenge. And it really made a lot of sense. We realized, wow, even as I grow intellectually, I need to ensure this body is able to, uh, to is in good position so that I can continue to enjoy uh, the my the, the uh, my my value, or I can continue enjoying the benefits of my intellectual growth for a longer time. So holistic, yeah, the holistic aspects of growth. There are some uh, segments that we need to focus on in our growth. One is skill skills enhancement, yeah, the personal skills, the abilities, the competencies. Then the mental conditioning. This is where we are talking about issues of resilience, issues of positivity, the positive outlook. That's the mental conditioning. So this combination is important and then habit creation. Yeah, the behaviors, the thoughts. And that is now what adds up um, to the bigger picture, the daily routines that you have, you've been talking about. So these three elements are important uh, in the personal growth uh, and and development. So personal growth and development may include a number of goals, including uh, defining and planning, yeah, coming up with a personal development uh, plan. And also it uh, entails the other goal of improving our self-awareness. Leaders remember earlier, we talked about uh, self-awareness. We actually had practical experience on these uh, exercises just to deepen our understanding because sometimes we might feel or we might think that we know ourselves until we have a, a, a conversation that really takes us so deep into ourselves. And we realize there's so much that we need to know about ourselves. So improving self-knowledge is another goal, improving our skills, our personality, our identity as well, and the strengths and also talents. Career-wise, that's also very important. It's another goal. Uh, the issues to do with Potential, yeah, growing our potential. Employability, uh, where applicable, then lifestyle, the quality of life also contributes to uh, improving the quality of life. Our health, talked about the health, social status, social relationship and emotional intelligence, and then also spiritual identity development and recognition. So these are the areas and the goal is to ensure that we we are able to take care of all these areas that we have mentioned uh, as, as we do our planning. If we do our planning, then the planning needs to encompass all this. Again, uh, we could sum it in terms of the five areas for personal growth and development. Uh, relationship, here, this is where we're talking about the issue of social, uh, social um, uh, development. Uh, health and wellness, the career, the finance, the recreation, among the others that we have uh, we have mentioned. So these are the planning process or personal development planning process. Again, we have to start from the self-analysis. Yeah, then that entails the personal reflection. Honest appraisal of our strength, our weaknesses, our potential. And then from that uh, appraisal, we are able to set some goals, set some objectives, and then that now leads into a comprehensive uh, personal development uh, plan. 
Uh, in this exercise, uh, in this lesson, we'll have an exercise just to be able to figure, uh, to, to practically work out uh, what we are discussing here in terms of short-term, uh, medium-term, and long-term plans. So uh, this exercise will really take us back to what we are discussing and then uh, put all this into, uh, into perspective. So the personal development process, the... You could put it in terms of the three Ds, but this is more. So the discovery, the development, and deployment. But you can also talk about discovery. This is the awareness uh, space. Uh, development, then mastery, and then actual actualization. But the three Ds still sums up uh, what uh, the process looks like. The, develop the discovery, the development, then we have deploy. Uh, there is another process here, self-assessment, yeah, where we are able to uh, explore our personal development process, where we go to look at our skills, our personality, and our interests. Again, this sort of a recap as well. Then discovery, yeah, what our strength, uh, what our weaknesses, what our interests, what our values, what our likes and dislikes. Then we move on to goal setting. Once we understand that, then we can be able to uh, we can be able to set goals, goals that can help us to be able to to uh, to actualize uh, and even grow in our areas of strength. So goal setting could be short term, could be long term, it could be medium medium term goals to turn our vision uh, into into reality, and then action in our plans that now turns the plans. Uh, into into reality as well. So this is another process that we could follow. Yeah, we undertake an assessment, a self assessment, uh, a self discovery. Then we set the goal, and then we are able to take uh, an action. Uh, the the process again could entail having clear aims and objectives at the very beginning. What are what are the aims and objectives? Maybe within, the, if it's a career space, if uh, it's one of the domains, uh, let's talk about maybe health. Yeah, so we have clear aims, we have clear objectives. Maybe within three months, this is what uh, I want to achieve. I want to have reduced my weight from this to this. Yeah, uh, but where am I currently? Yeah, current realities. This is where I am now. Yeah, what are the gaps? For me, what do I need to work on? Yeah, maybe I, I now I weigh uh, 80 kgs. I want to reduce this to 75. Yeah, so I need to work on this five. And then what are the appropriate activities that I need to uh, to undertake, including what strategies should I deploy? Maybe daily, what do I need to do daily? Do I need to go to the gym or all that? Uh, how do I measure my progress and how do I also get feedback uh, so that I'm able to know uh, if I'm, I'm, I'm improving. So the same cycle again here, just the same, but now in a pictorial, uh, in a pictorial uh, format. So that's in connects to the, uh, the PDCA, uh, Plan, Do, Check and Act, which again is also a personal development. Uh, personal development uh, process. Yeah, so we need to plan ahead for change, uh, analyze and predict the results. This is why I, I this way I am, and this is where I need to be. Then I move on to the execution. Then I need to consistently be able to check the results so that to, I'm able to track my progress and then take action to be able to improve the process. See, am I achieving the goals? Do I need to make any adjustments? Um, uh, so that I can probably improve my results. There's also the personal growth model. And this one, I'll give you an example here. Maybe I would also invite one of you um, um, just to share again an, an example on this. Uh, the personal growth model. And the personal growth model, model has these uh, five areas. One, we have to start with a belief. A belief. Yeah, and this is maybe a mindset or a motivation. Then we, from the belief, we plan, we come up with a plan. Yeah, and we set up some goal and also come up with a strategy. 
then we have to take action. And that action here could include issues to do with habits uh, and also uh, the particular actions or what do we need to execute. And then we move on to the results. Yeah, how do we look, how do we measure the results? How do we get feedback? What are the rewards? What are the outcomes? Then we review, we evaluate, we assess, we redesign strategies, and then we move on to, to a belief. Let me give you an example uh, so that we can just put this again into context. From a belief, one of the examples, and as I do this, maybe I'll request you be thinking of an example, then we can, I can, I'll invite one of you just to also share. Uh, I could start with a belief that uh, one of them is that I believe reading is useful and can expand my knowledge. That's a belief. Okay, so in terms of plan, what do I do? I need to set a goal to finish reading one book every week from the belief. This is what I believe, and then this is my plan. So I believe that reading is useful to expand my knowledge, and therefore I need to set a goal to finish reading one book every week. How about action? I place a I place books and my Kindle reader next to my to my bed. In terms of results, I read every night consecutively for seven days. Then in terms of review, I track my reading habits every night with a habit tracking application. So you can see from the belief, what do I believe? Then from the belief, what do I plan? And then what action do I take? How do I uh, measure my results? Or what do I um, uh, or gauge my results? And then how do I review my results? This is a personal development growth model. Probably I could just pause here for a minute or so uh, just to be able to try and reflect on this personal growth model uh, and um, just think of another, probably another example uh, that we could share just to appreciate this model. And, and I would just want to open this up. Uh, maybe anybody who could share an example here? Any other example that will flows according to the example that we have looked at here. Could also be something that maybe you may want to practice after this. Yeah, maybe let me invite uh, one person. I don't know, William, William, could you attempt this? Uh, yes, thank you, Joseph. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll uh, try and uh, maybe use this example. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the year 2008, uh, Barack Obama was campaigning to be the first uh, Black American president of the United States of America. And he uh, used to this slogan where it was said that, uh, uh, yes, we can. That was the famous slogan that... Uh, Barack Obama used during his campaign. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is at this point that he believed he can be the first Black American president of the US. And uh, after doing uh, that campaigning, uh, not sleeping during the nights, during the campaigning, the, the campaign night and day, uh, he was able to be to achieve his goal, that of becoming the first Black American uh, president. So you can see the power of the, the personal growth. He was able to come uh, to become uh, the first Black American president. Uh, and this is because he believed in himself. So I think uh, we can also try and use that example uh, as one evaluates uh, their personal growth and uh, development in leadership. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, William. That's really uh, uh, awesome. And, and I like that belief. He believed he could be the first president of of, uh, of U.S. and that trickled down to many other um, um, many other uh, uh, undertakings, including how do I, what are the plans? Yeah, so he had clear plans, clear actions, 
I had clear measurement of how to measure results, uh, tools to measure results, and then also to review how are we doing um, uh, in the ground in terms of uh, uh, probably gaining the, the votes and all that. So th thank you so much. I think that, that's really a very good example. Uh, so we have uh, we have some some uh, uh, attributes, personal development attributes. We could call them success attributes. Yeah, success attributes. One of them is focus. Yeah, focus here. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki talks about follow one course until successful. So focus, as I said here, it's about narrowing down, being a specialist, the being having a point of focus, uh, and ensuring that we remain we, we have our 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 eyes on the ball. Yeah, so we have our eyes on the ball, and we have a clear target. Avoiding being a uh, becoming jack of all trades, yeah, and then positivity, yeah, positivity uh, keeps us moving, keeps us on track. So we need to establish an environment of soberness and open mindedness uh, for us to enjoy uh, or to be able to uh, maintain a personal growth and development plan. Uh, positivity, even when we can't see the results. We, we have to be positive something is happening. Uh, then we have consistency, saying success is the sum total of small efforts which are repeated day in, day out. Yeah, so it's not what we do once in a while that sh shapes our lives, but what we do consistently. Uh, then the other factor is self-discipline. I think this is uh, clear. Um, uh, the firmness of purpose, uh, ensuring that we stick to our, our systems. Patience is about constantly doing everything that we can, but being patient about results. We said it's about process. Personal development is a process. Then persistency, the ability to maintain a will as constant as time in pursuit of what, uh, what uh, we desire to be able to achieve what, what we could visualize. So I'll use this example um, of a Chinese bamboo tree, just to try and put, uh, uh, to, uh, to try and explain these attributes again using this particular example. So it said that the seed of a Chinese bamboo tree is so hard that when it's planted, I'm, I'll just paraphrase the story, when it's planted for five years, nothing seems to happen. Nothing seems to happen. So five years, this seed is, is under the ground. Nothing happens within those five years, but the farmer has to continue watering the seed. The farmer has to continue doing the necessary actions. The farmer has to be positive that, yes, I can't see for five years what, what, what is happening, but that belief, that faith, something is happening. The farmer has to be consistent, has to be patient, has to be persistent, has also to have self-discipline and has to focus on that particular area. This is where I planted the seed. But what happens after five years, it is said that for about six weeks, the, the Chinese bamboo tree grows between 80 to 90 feet, 90 feet. Drastically, within a very, very short time, the Chinese bamboo tree grows so drastically. It's actually said clearly when it's monitored, they can see that uh, rapid growth uh, on a daily basis. But the question is, is it only is it the five years or is it the six years? These five years are critical. And we can compare this also to personal growth and development. Sometimes we might feel like nothing significant is happening. But with the time, with the time, with the consistency, with the persistence, with positivity, one day we realize a lot has happened in our lives. So leaders, this is be able to appreciate that story of Chinese bamboo tree and appreciate that the gradual process eventually becomes a rapid process 
but it comes with uh, appreciating the growth uh, the growth attributes that you have talked about. There are some traps that we need to watch as we bring this to a close. Some of the traps of personal growth and development. One of the traps is the environment. Yeah, we need to be in the position ourselves in environment that challenges to grow. We're saying comfort and security can trap our growth and development. I'm very happy to note that this program has been a catalyst. There are leaders that have gone through this program and some of them have confessed, I was in a comfort zone. I needed a trigger. I needed something to stretch me to the next level. So environment could be a trap. So we need to watch out about that. Then we have the mindset. Yeah, are we in the uh have we are we have we developed a growth mindset? Yeah, we're saying the difference between successful and unsuccessful people is how they think about who they are and what they have. It's also about what we think about personal growth. So if we really value personal growth, then also that, that comes again with a shift in terms of how uh, we how we value uh, personal growth. Albert Einstein said we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Sometimes we have to shift our thinking so that we be able to appreciate, especially on issues to do with the personal growth and development. We also need to watch out on self-defeating habits. That could be another, another, uh, another trap. And remember what I've mentioned, uh, I think now this could be the third time, that we don't rise to our goals. We rise to the level of our habits. So every new level in life demands new habits. So as we plan our personal growth, it's we need to also go back and remember the, the, the components, the three components that you have talked about, the skills enhancement, uh, the, the issue of uh, mental toughness, and also the issue of uh, uh, behavior, because that again connects to uh, the, the very, uh, the very uh, issues that really brings the difference uh, in terms of personal growth. That's the habits that we are talking about. So the comfort zone could be one of the traps. Yeah, feeling safe and in control. But we need to ask ourselves, does this also add value in terms of our growth? That could lead us to the fear zone. Yeah, uh, which again takes us to the learning zone and eventually we are able to find our purpose, live our dreams. That happens when we are in the, in the growth zone. So leaders... This is just to do a, uh, just sum up what we have talked about. And uh, as I mentioned, the exercise will help us now to ensure that we maintain momentum. Done quite a lot together, but we now need to ensure that we don't lose momentum. And it also we also need to challenge ourselves. Yes, I've gone through this book review. Uh, I need to move on to the next book. I need to move on probably then to the next level of this masterclass or even to another program that will uh, help us to maintain uh, our momentum. So I I close up with this quote by Robert Anthony that you can only have two things in life, reasons and results, but reasons don't count. So our focus here is consistency, consistent growth. Yeah, the measure of personal growth is always results and impact. So as we have worked together, I'm sure there is some results that we can talk about. But more importantly, there is impact that we can talk about or even others could be able to relate with uh, as leaders, the people that we are serving uh, out, out there. So uh, that's personal growth and development, just uh, 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 putting everything into context, trying to reflect the journey, trying to see where are we and how do we move on uh, from where we are uh, to the next to the next level? Uh, maybe I want to post the post here and maybe just uh, uh, invite maybe some reaction on this and then we could just uh, uh, discuss briefly about the project proposal and then we bring this discussion to a close. I, I would just maybe invite uh, a, a comment or even an additional contribution uh, in terms of what we have shared 
on the personal development and growth, and also could be also be a take home uh, that we want to share uh, with the leaders. Could I start with the uh, with Teresia? Then I'll move on to Betty and allow us just to reflect on this as as we bring this to a close. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I think that lesson has posed a challenge. And at times, maybe, maybe for me, not all of us, but for me, I've faced some inconsistency. And I think I said last time that the, you can start something and along the way, you lose track or you lose momentum and through these lessons this is what we are being built on and being trained on and also taught that we have to be resilient and where we have lost consistency it is not late we have to pick up ourselves and give us that push and we are going to see our dreams, our visions, and our, our desire coming to fruition. And I think uh, for me personally, it is a challenge and a positive one that I'm, I'm working on that I may see myself where I had purposed to see myself in five, 10 years that I may achieve in small bits and I'll get there. But consistency, as we have learned, is key. We have to be consistent in everything and also emulate the leaders that we see are successful and by the, the virtue of their attributes. And with that, we are going to be that desired leader, a leader who is purposeful and a leader who is going to make a difference and I feel in the area of health, let me talk a little bit about health. At times, there are very simple things that we are supposed to do. Maybe exercise, eat a well-balanced diet, and constantly check ourselves. But you find that we ignore some of these small, small details that at the long run, you find yourself in a big mess where you would have prevented, like the plan that we have seen of maybe uh, reading, waking up, if we can only put it in practical, even in our health life and wake up, exercise, even if it's that five minutes, it helps and also live well, live a well-balanced life. At the long run, we will see the results. And I appreciate so much for this because it's not only teaching us as leaders, but also in areas where we can be of great help in our families, in our nation, that when we preserve our bodies and we take care of our bodies, we are able also to bring and to yield positive results that we'll be able to see our generation emulate also and they practice that. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Teresia. That's a, a wonderful summary. Uh, really put a lot of um, issue that you have discussed into context and uh, just trying to also put some weight on some particular um, factors including consistency. Maybe I would uh, uh, not in any particular order just uh, invite uh, uh, any additional comment on this probably maybe one more then we discuss about project proposals short briefly. Anybody who may want to add uh, into what Tracia has said? Uh, 
Okay, let me let me say something. Uh, so I want to appreciate you for this lesson. It is actually a timeless lesson. Um, I've learned that for personal growth and development to happen, we must be able to, to release ourselves and stretch. You know, allow stretching to take place by leaving our comfort zones. And that uh, growth will demand that we are, uh, for growth to happen, as I, I'd said, uh, we have to be outside the comfort zone. We have to have daily habits because they really matter when it comes to personal growth. Those daily habits will build up into, into what we end up being because what we do often one thing is what we end up being. And um, I've also learned that personal growth requires us to be intentional. You cannot grow if you are not intentional, if you are not willing to, 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 to plan and ask yourself, Okay, I think there is a technical hitch. Uh, we shall uh, invite Beatrice to conclude once she is back. <laughs> so, um, I think it requires that we be intentional. You should plan and ask yourself, what do I want to achieve? And what struck me the most is on self-care. And when you spoke of the story, even if you develop yourself and you fail to carry out self-care, then how long will you enjoy the benefits? I think this is a, a game changer because at times we focus so much on uh, the things that we want to achieve and at times we may neglect self-care. So um, I'm, I'm really learning that we need to develop ourselves wholesomely and, um, and ensure that we... Leave the messages home, uh, but uh, we need to get that story completed. Um... I don't... So uh, let me finish. Um... I'm saying uh, I'm, I'm I'm also learning that we should uh, have the attributes of focus, the self discipline, and consistency, patience, and others, in order to 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 grow. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you so much, uh, uh, Beatrice. I think again, it's also a reflection, a reflection um, moment. Uh, you know, there are times we just. We might have this conversation and then depending with the priority areas, you realize someone will just decide to run with a particular uh, particular um, uh, or select a particular area and then you start just following or implementing some particular initiatives. So that's why I felt I just needed to share that story from that professor because it really helped us. And some of us, we had to really manage uh, our weight and manage our bodies so that uh, we we continue to function uh, optimally. Yeah. So take the challenge in whatever di direction, whatever dimension. Uh, you uh, know yourself. You know the critical areas you need to focus on. Uh, let's take the challenge uh, as we continue to uh, uh, plan out and operationalize our personal growth and development. Remember, it's not about the intensity, intensity yes is good, but of essence is the consistency. And that is why we have find a few people are able to get to the top of the success triangle because of the consistency. And then a big pool are not able to get to the tip of the, the, the success triangle because of this issue of consistency. There are some who rise, but again, they are not able to get beyond a particular level. And then those who are consistent consistent are able to shift to the, to the next uh, to the next level let it be a challenge and we appreciate thank you so much uh, leaders and um, we appreciate for your uh, contribution i hope i've not i've not um, I've, I've not left anybody out who 
would wish to make a comment on this. Okay, maybe for the interest of time, we could continue talking about this on the chat. Uh, for the interest of time, uh, I, I would uh, request, probably we could share the update in terms of um, uh, the methodology, which methodology uh, did you settle? Maybe one, we could start with the topic. We had a discussion about the topic, defining the topic. So uh, probably we could indicate, have you agreed on the topic? Uh, have you refined the topic? And then secondly, uh, the methodology that you uh, selected and, and then how far have you gone in terms of uh, the methodology? So we could just uh, discuss that briefly. Uh, then the rest, I could look at the content as you share. Uh, then we could exchange through the email as we prepare for next week. Next week, we'll have more time on this because we have one session, uh, lesson 16 only. And then after that, we'll be able to have more time to discuss the project proposal as we prepare for the final presentation uh, in two weeks, uh, in two weeks time. So let me invite you, Tim, uh, just to share your progress uh, in line with the uh, areas that I've, I've mentioned. Uh, I think I'll share about the the, to the topic. Uh, we, we um I believe we managed to to come up with a, a simpler topic. Um, just give me a minute. The topic we, we I, I I believe we uh, we agreed on uh, to build awareness among the elderly persons on healthcare for promotion of health and wellness in Kibiko area Gong location. Uh, I don't know what's your take on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, we are yet to agree on the methodologies. We unfortunately we were not able to meet on uh, last week. Uh, but I think on the objective, uh, Margaret can take us through. She she had written some uh, on the we were discussing on chat. Margaret. Oh, yes, yes, Betty. Um, unfortunately, I'm using my phone, and that's why I had uh, written written them. Uh, but let me look at. Uh, okay, I I know when uh, we actually exchange. Uh, we have been exchanging a lot, although we are not able to meet even virtually. But we have been exchanging. Uh, on WhatsApp because uh, mine was really my concern was really to as we we refine the topic we do not lose the we don't we, we don't in the in methodology at least we are it's supposed to come up with the 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 where the why and the how, and maybe, I mean, I don't know, other areas. Eh? And uh, when I, I, I remember the Betty with this, as uh, exchanging, exchanging on the WhatsApp, and I, I, I insisted, let's, uh, let's focus on a certain target group, which we were, I say, I told, remember I told you, we were missing who, who, who are we targeting, because this is a, this is will be the the target population will be finally there will be the the beneficiary when when now we come to implement our our proposal or who will receive the who shall we focus on to provide the care or the these interventions because as we the, the I want to see it uh, as if if it is to benefit anybody is the as well, the work we will do, we'll finally, if somebody else can take it up and continue and implement and actually uh, uh, 
now implement, that is carry on with the strategies that we may come up with. The, the, so that now the, the objectives, I think, uh, uh, in the objectives, I had three. We explore uh, explore the, the level of awareness of this, so at the target group I had put mainly, uh, we had, uh, we were focusing on the older person because really to, to narrow down literally to, you know, to, to focus on who, to, who do we, because if you again with you are very broad, you may not be able to, able to achieve much. Yeah? Uh, then the other one was, uh, the other objective was you to utilize, identify, Sorry, no, yeah, to utilize. I can't remember very well. Then the, the, the final one was to develop all these interventions. And uh, for me, I think we need to focus on, if we want to talk about the self-awareness, creating or building that self-awareness, we want the youth, yes, let's focus on the youth. If you want to focus on the, 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 the other yes, or even to, to other another group. But uh, if you focus on the leaders, uh, because uh, I don't I don't know how we are going to to bring in the aspect of the leadership again. That's for and area we do not agree actually, uh, because again I look at it also. If this uh, this target population, this uh, this person that we are addressing, is also a part of self self lead. Lead the self awareness, self self lead in the self care, because even if you raise this awareness, it's like we are saying, uh, is to help them to actually uh, unearth or discover their 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 ability to take care of of self. So I. I'm not very sure whether we should leave, but leave out this term. The, the, the you know to develop also the, the the ability for one to be able to lead self. So the the term leadership, I don't know how we shall apply it, apply it here. Over to you, and especially our Mister Kiari, maybe here you can help us to to really come up with the, when as we refine this topic that we have in mind, who are we, if we develop a questionnaire, who shall we uh, address the questionnaire to who, or who where shall we receive, uh, get the, put the, the questions to that we receive, we get the, the responses, the responses which will tell us, yes, this is the level of their, of their, their, of their knowledge on self-care. So if uh, we target the leaders who are these leaders again, we shall need to focus on. I think this area of the methodology, we have not really explored it very well. We need to still look at it at a deeper, deeper level. And I, I was also I was suggesting it be and have an expansive discussion, mm. even if it's in a meeting or now as we we table it and uh, for, for, for a wider group to discuss the and agree on the methodology. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Margaret. I don't know if uh this is you have a comment on or William. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Uh as for me, I think uh Betty and uh, Margaret who are my team members have been able to share so far what you have been able to gather. That is on the topic and objective. Uh, but on the methodology, uh, we have not yet tackled on that part, but uh, we'll be doing it uh, in our next meeting. 
So we assure you in our next meeting, we'll be having something on that. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Beatrice. Thank you so much. Um, like Betty had said, we've not been able to meet this week. I think there were commitments here and there. But uh, at least we have settled on handling on the issue, or rather self-care for the elderly person. And we have also settled on where to carry out, or rather the um the objectives are also related. so i think once we get a, a green light we can we can move ahead and, and carry on at the other areas of methodology and 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 and, and the literature review thank you okay. uh, thank you so much tim uh so i just minor, just my just observations, just, uh, just to uh, help you as you reflect more. So I I, I cannot uh, from uh, uh, the team the issue of um, how do you bring in the aspect of leadership. It's still something that you're trying to consider, uh, and I think this is a follow up to our conversation last week. We had. Um, mentioned if we could focus uh in terms of self-care uh, for leaders yeah so uh, and 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 margaret i agree with you uh, even as we talk about the elder we are still talking of an aspect of leadership unless now we want to bring it uh, clearly but this again will also be guided by the objectives because we have we have to address each objective so if we have, for example, one of the objectives, uh, if I read what um, Betty has shared, build awareness among the elderly. Uh, we mentioned one of the objectives being explore the level of awareness. So we need to ask ourselves, how shall we do this? Because we need to address this as an objective. Uh, are we able to get this data online or from the literature? or are we able to address uh, the minister a questionnaire? And uh, we also need to probably research on how do we uh, measure the level of awareness? What are some of the tools that are out there? Are there some recommended uh, structured or frameworks that we could uh, apply um, uh, on this? Yeah, so, so that if we need to, if we need to, refine our objectives uh, then we, are, we 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 need to do that probably at this particular uh, particular level because remember the objectives must be uh, as smart as we said we must be able to measure them we we must be able to uh we, we must be able to follow all those criteria of uh, a smart a smart objective so if we realize uh, we may not be able to adequately address that that objective then we might need to be able to refine it so that it's quite measurable and uh, this is what the methodology will address so uh, the methodology will also be informed by the the kind of objectives that we are coming up with if we can address them from the literature review alone then that will be okay if we may not get adequate data from the literature review then it means maybe we might need to undertake a survey uh, or we might need even to 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 do a benchmark. Uh, so objectives are very key in terms of how do we address or how do we, which which methodology do we, uh, we, do we go for. Uh, if you focus on leaders, my thinking, this is my thinking, if you focus on leaders, maybe you could narrow down to the GLN leaders. And then we could administer that questionnaire to the GLN leaders. That, that would be probably a much easier um, because then we we'll just post this to the network uh, and then we'll uh, encourage them just to fill the questionnaire and, and then we'll be able to analyze that. So 
uh for 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 leaders we could narrow down i focus on gln uh, that's a clear target uh, that we can be able to administer the questionnaire uh, but uh, now if you still work on the elderly you need to really see uh, how do we get this data uh, from the elderly so if you crack that then that will still be okay uh, you may you may continue with that if it's online from researcher and you feel you will adequately be able to address all the objectives from the literature that's okay but if you feel you might have a challenge addressing uh, this from the perspective of the elderly then as a team you can uh, still have a conversation and then uh, reconsider but uh, what um, we need to do within these two weeks we'll have we'll, we'll we shall stretch we shall stretch a little bit uh, so that um, we close up as much as possible. Uh, so the biggest task now is to clearly refine and agree on the on the on the topic based on what we have discussed here. Once you clear out on that, then we now move on, refine the objectives. If we need to to relook at them, then straight away we move to the methodology. Yeah. So. Uh, I think a, a little bit of stretching, but I'm sure if we were able to have one virtual meeting uh, comprehensively, you, you can be able to uh, iron out that uh, based on the conversation that we're having tonight. Uh, I don't know how you find that, uh, Betty and the team. Uh, we can arrange for a virtual meeting. I think that one will be, will be more appropriate to solve all the issues we might be having. Okay. Uh, Margaret? Mm. Yes, I agree with the, the group, the, the team members. If we have one meeting, one virtual meeting, we'll be able to agree on the way forward. And thank you for for that insight. As you say, the GNL team would make a, a already is easier to reach them. However, um would you would it uh, would um now would it matter how many people we are able to reach? The the, the 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 what we now would call a sample because uh, if for us to write a report a genuine report then it means that uh, and uh, how many people would give this information that you can say it is giving a a, a picture that would be reflect what is happening to the wider population? Yeah, probably you could consider this as a pilot. Um, and I'm sure uh, as a team, we will look at a percentage of how many are we targeting and then a particular percentage. But uh, we could consider this as a pilot so that once we get the results, if we now want to do a comprehensive research, that will be able to guide us uh, in terms of um, uh, how many. Again, it's always about the zoning. If you're targeting a particular population, there's a particular percentage uh, that which is a threshold which you have to, uh, to, to, to be able to attain. But we could consider it as a, as a pilot as well. Okay, uh, so uh, I think the most important uh, leaders uh, um, have refined the topic, agree on the topic. Uh, secondly, uh, see how measurable the objectives are. Uh, if you need to uh, relook at them, look at them uh, so that we ensure that each objective can be adequately addressed. So if you talk about the level of awareness, then from our our literature, that will come out clear. We can actually be able to tell, or even the tool that you're going to use, uh, that tool will be able to guide us to be able to, uh, to, to measure that. 
So let's look at that. Uh, if you require me to come on board, uh, Betty, just let me know. I, I would I would also come on board and um, just be able to have, have that discussion with you. But if you, you want to have it first as a team, that is also still okay. Probably we could leave it, leave it at that. Uh, uh, let's just uh, try and stretch within these two weeks and, and see how much we can do. Uh, and then once we we wind up, we can still go beyond uh, the, the, the program's uh, schedule. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think with that, I want to appreciate you. I know when we start talking about the project proposal, sometimes we, uh, we spill beyond the time. Uh, uh, apologize for that um, uh, so that we ensure that by the time we are completing at least we have done some significant work together uh, as a team so I want to say thank you so much uh, I want to appreciate uh, um, all of you I appreciate Maureen for coming on I appreciate Teresia con for consistently being on board uh, Mr. Mwangi thank you so much uh, been very helpful very consistent as well uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Grace. Uh, uh, I, I know we always have a conversation even after this. I want to say thank you so much for uh, standing up with this team and, and just giving them feedback, sometimes directly, uh, so that we continue, we continue to grow together as a team. So cohort 36, thank you. We are almost there. Next week, we handle lesson 16. And, and we'll be good to go. Uh, this has been a long journey, uh, but very uh, insightful, very transformative, I believe. And, and already, I, as I said, I've started missing this cohort, uh, but we shall always be together in the network. I don't know, Dr. Ari Grace, if you have a, a comment to share with this team as we wind up. Good evening, Chairman and the, the team. We are so proud of you for joining this and we will consistently uh, retaliate that. We are so proud of you. I'm sure learning is for us leaders every other time. We have to learn, we have to sharpen the ax so that we are fit for the work. Today we have learned about mentorship and the stretching parts. And uh, it's a challenge that we can even put to ourselves as we go about doing our businesses, how are we mentoring from the household? How are we mentoring our children? How are we mentoring the people we come across in the neighborhood? And as we go to work, how many have we mentored? I liked the, the testimony of Beatrice. So that, that is what we are consistently called to do. And it has to be intentional. Remember that it has to be intentional. You look at a girl and you see they are not doing what is supposed to be seen and you take it upon yourself to mentor them, whether they like it or not. Uh, maybe they will come back to you. Some will come back to you, some will not, but yes, it is for a while, of course. Uh, just to sum it up, I, I just felt like you guys should take up this challenge of doing your project with us, GLN, you know, self-care and GLN leaders because we will be able to fill for you the, the questionnaires and you will easily get the result. And it will be exciting during graduation to share with us the feedback so that we know now, where are we going in the next cohort, uh, the next trainings, where are we? Because then this will be, it will start a discussion on where we are in self-care or do we do it because our chairman keeps on telling us, or at our own time, do we really do it? Uh, so instead of going to the, okay, even the old, <laughs> we can do them, but even better still, doing with GN, GLN, and then you we, you will, whatever be quoted during our training, you will always not be quoting your cohort, having gone out of your way to do the research, and these were the findings, and then we will not be quoting you as we train. So that would have been my, you know, submission and, you know, just appealing, kindly do it with us so that, you know, for us, it's a living document because we are going to be there for the graduation. 
you're going to be meeting each other during these forums and all that. So we will constantly refer to that research so that we can also improve on our, ourselves as leaders since we are here to learn. Thank you, Chairman. It's always a pleasure. Today I've also learned a lot and I look forward to the ne next class next week. Thank you. Back to you, Chairman. Yeah, kindly uh, say a prayer for us. Okay, let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you this evening with thanksgiving in our heart. Thank you for carrying us through this day, for being with us, holding us with your right hand of righteousness, leading us in green pastures and in still waters, guiding us, directing our paths, providing for us, protecting us. We return all the glory to you. We have gone out to work. We have come back safely. We thank you. Thank you even for taking care of our families. When we came back, we met them safe. We return all the glory to you. Thank you for GLN members and all the leaders that we have, starting with our president and his deputy and their families, down to the grassroots leaders that you have given us. We pray that, Lord, may you grant them wisdom, understanding, and knowledge in all matters, like you did to Solomon, like you did to Daniel, like you did to Abraham, Isaac, like you did to your people. That, Lord, whatever decisions that they need to make, they may make them according to your will. Father, we remember every person that is preparing for the graduation. Father, we pray that you may provide for finances. We, you may provide even for the time that we will not be tied at our places of work. But, Lord, we shall come together. We shall come together to network, to learn from one another, even to change our levels. That is our desire that by the time we are graduating, the time we are leaving the, the program to the next level, we will have changed our levels and it shall be ev ev evident that we are impacting and transforming the world. Father, thank you for our chairman and all the committee members who are involved in organizing for the training, in mentoring, in the marketing, in all that. Father, may you give them wisdom, may you embrace them to continue the more, never to give up for the sake of your kingdom. Father, we magnify your name. As we depart, we leave ourselves in your hands. May you watch over us. You who keep uh, the keeper of Israel, may you watch over us as we sleep. And may you be with us the whole of this week, oh God. Until we meet again next week, we place everything in your hand. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and believed. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, leaders, and I wish you all a blessed night, and uh, see you again on Monday. Good night, leaders. Congratulations. Have a blessed week.